What's up guys? Our lesson for today is the first part of theory of congruences. First, we have the basic properties of congruences, which will start by the definition of congruence modulo n. So I think karamihan sa inyo alam na ang definition na ito. Let n be a fixed positive integer. Two integers a and b are said to be congruent modulo n. In symbol, we have a congruent to b modulo n. If n divides the difference a minus b, that is, a minus b is equal to k times n for some integer k. For example, 19 is congruent to 34 modulo 5 because 19 minus 34 equals negative 15, which is divisible by 5. In some books, they define a is congruent to b modulo n if a and b have the same remainder when divided by n. Just like 19 is congruent to 34 modulo 5, if 19 and 34 are both divided by 5, then they leave the same remainder, which is 4. So we also have properties of the congruence modulo n. Number 1, a is congruent to a modulo n. So this is the reflexive property. Number 2, we have if a is congruent to b modulo n, then b is congruent to a modulo n. This is the symmetric property. Number three, if A is congruent to B modulo N and B is congruent to C modulo N, then A is congruent to C modulo N. This is the transitive property. So the first three properties imply that the congruence modulo N is an equivalence relation. If A is congruent to B modulo N and C is congruent to D modulo N, then if you sum up those two congruences, A plus C is congruent to B plus D modulo N. So, yung pag sum up ng dalawang congruences holds. If A is congruent to B modulo N, then A plus C is congruent to B plus C modulo N, and AC is congruent to BC modulo N. So, if you have a congruence, then pwede, mong mag, pwede kang mag-add or mag-multiply ng the same uh, integer both sides of the congruence and lastly we have if a is congruent to b modulo n then a to the k is congruent to b to the k modulo n for any positive integer k so this means that if you have a congruence you can raise both sides of the congruence by any positive integer k itong mga properties na ito magamit natin to, to prove results and solve problems involving congruence modulo n. For example, gusto nating i-prove na yung 2 to the 20 minus 1 is divisible by 41. Okay, so note that 2 to the 5 is equal to 32. Pero yung 32 is congruent to negative 9 modulo 41. Kasi 32 minus negative 9 equals 41, which is obviously divisible by 41. It means 2 to the 5 is congruent to negative 9 modulo 41. So erase natin ang congruence to the power of 4. This is uh, property number 6. So ito ang mangyayari. So we have 2 to the 5 to the power of 4 is congruent to negative 9 to the power of 4 modulo 41. So this is uh, this negative 9 to the power 4 equals negative 9 squared times negative 9 squared. Okay, so ma-retain yung congruence. And then note that negative 9 squared is equal to 81. So we have 81 times 81 modulo 41. Pero 81 is congruent to negative 1 modulo 41 kasi 81 minus negative 1 equals 82. And 82 is divisible by 41. So that means we can replace 81 by negative 1. So we have uh, negative, negative 1 times negative 1 modulo 41. So this means we have 2 to the 20 is congruent to negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 modulo 41. Therefore, if you transpose 1 to the other side, so we have there 2 to the 20 minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo 41 or we have 2 to the 20 minus 1 is divisible by 41 okay so yung 
yung ginawa natin is we use the properties to solve or to prove 2 to the 5 to the 20 minus 1 is divisible by 41 okay so another example what is the remainder when 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial plus until 100 factorial is divided by 12? So kung gagamit kayo ng calculator, aabutin kayo ng ilang oras sa pag-type pa lang ng expression sa calculator. Tapos pag-divide mo ng 12, error yung lalabas kasi malaki pa rin yung number. So, medyo hindi advisable yung calculator sa mga problems like this one. So, the best thing to do is to use the concept of modulo or to use the basic properties of congruence modulo n. So, note that 12 is equal to 4 times 3. Meaning, lahat ng mga terms na may 4 times 3 na factors i 0 modulo 12. So, yung mga... Ano yung mga factors na sa, sa 1 plus 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial plus that, that plus 100 factorial na may 4 times 3? So, di ba yun yung mga numbers from 4 factorial to 100 factorial? Kasi yung mga 4 factorial papuntang 100 factorial, yung mga meron silang factors na 4 at saka 3. So, lahat yun 0 modulo 12. Okay, so this means that 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus dot 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 plus 100 factorial is congruent to 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial modulo 12. Okay, so this is, this is congruent to 1 plus 2 plus 6 in, modulus, in modulo 12. So which is 9. So the, rem the remainder of 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus until 100 factorial when divided by 12 is equal to 9 okay so we also have another property so if ca is congruent to cb modulo n then a is congruent to b modulo n over d where d is congruent to the g where d is equal to the gcd of c and n so, pwede mo din pala i-apply ang cancellation sa congruence modulo n provided na i-divide mo yung n by the GCD of C and n. For example, meron tayong problem na what is the value of x if 4x is congruent to 8 modulo 6? So, meron kang 4 na uh, coefficient of x. So, gusto natin i-cancel yung 4, di ba? So, using this theorem, so 4x over 4 is congruent to 8 over 4, modulo 6 over 2. So, saan yung galing yung 2? So, yung 2 is the GCD of 6 and 4. So, pwede mong makancel yung 4 sa both sides of the congruence provided that i-divide mo din yung n by the GCD of 6 and 4, which is equal to 2. So, meaning x is congruent to 2 modulo 3. Okay, so, you can check it. So, pwedeng, uh, pwedeng 2, di ba? So, 4 times 2 is congruent to 8 modulo 6. Kasi 4 times 2 is 8. Pwede ding 5 kasi 5 is congruent to 2 modulo 3. So, we have uh, 4 times 5 equals 20. And 20 is congruent to 8 modulo 6 kasi 20 minus 8 is divisible by 6. Okay. So, isa sa mga immediate result for this theorem is this corollary. Standing at the door, I'm on the way A million things I guess that I should say